10.3, Quotient of Powers Property. Standard 8EE1, you can see underneath the skills. This is one of our skills for this standard, the quotient of powers. So we'll be looking at the bases and writing out our exponents. Again, using that power as our final answer. We'll also be incorporating product of powers too in a little bit. But before we get there, let's talk about the quotient of powers property. This is where when they have the same base, all we're going to do is subtract the exponents. So here it is algebraically, A and A. Those are your base, so keep the base the same and then subtract the powers. What I've always said to myself is, I help myself remember that this big old fraction line, I thought it was a subtraction line. So when I saw this powers, I had to remember what to do with them. I just see this fraction line, this dividing line as a subtraction sign. So I take the M minus the N. Example one down here, again, when they have that same base, just keep it. So since it's got a base of three, write down the three, and now subtract those. You can show me the work if you want to, that six minus two, but you can jump right to the answer, which is three to the fourth power. If it says to evaluate, give it to me that way. Otherwise, this is how we're gonna find our answers most of the time writing it as a power. Here you go. Simplify the expressions. Again, read the instruction. It says write as a power. Thus, when we're done here, we've got that same base A, so leave it as A. Subtract the exponents, A to the third, done. Up next, again, same thing with when they have that same base, you're gonna write that. Please note this base is a negative two in parentheses. Please keep it that way. And then just subtract those guys to the seventh and you're done. Writing out that original problem here and then showing me your answer, bingo, on every problem. And then one last one, here you go. If it's got the same base, so those same letters, the same bottom ones, you write that and then just subtract these. Seven minus six gives us a one, which is P to the one, or you could just tell me that that is P. I will accept either of those. Again, looking at this quotient of powers, put a check mark there. That's what we've been working on, we're gonna work on today, where we're gonna write our final answer as a power, looking at that base and focusing with our exponent, subtracting them. Now again, like I said, let's bring this on in. Let's bring in our previous knowledge of product of powers and tie it in with the quotient of powers. All we're gonna do is simplify our answer. There's two different ways to go about this. We can take it like PEM does in a sense and simplify the top. So what we can do is we can simplify the top and the bottom and then get ourselves an answer. From before, since they have the same base, boom, boom, the fives, we're gonna write it as five, and then we add these, so five to the eighth over five to the fourth, and from today, we talked about simplifying them since they are the quotient of powers. So same base of five to the fourth. That is one way you can solve those. The other way I'm gonna show you here in this next example. So again, you can solve it one of two ways. You can go across and just multiply across. So that gives us X to the 14th over X to the seventh, which when you subtract those, gives you x to the seventh. Perfect. The other way you can do that is by simplifying the fractions. So you can work your way down in a sense, if you will. Simplifying x to the sixth over x squared gives you x to the fourth times, and then simplifying this guy, we've got x to the third, and now using our product of powers property, we get x to the seventh. More than one way to get to the final answer, but either way, here's that original problem, and then you show me the work, get the answer. Word problem, so projected population, sometimes they'll do that with large numbers. We'll write them in an interesting way. We'll talk more about those in a moment. But from there, you can see the projected. So it's estimated in 2030, the Hawaiian population will be 5.59 times 12 to the 18th. The land area of Hawaii is two to the 14th square kilometers. So predict the average number of people per square kilometer in 2030. So we wanna know the people 
per kilometer squared. So that little ratio helping us out, setting it up. What you're going to see then is, we're going to write it out just as we have that. We've got it up there. 5.59 times 2 to the 18th. And then bringing in the kilometers, square kilometers, 2 to the 14th. Just like we've been doing before. Quotient of powers. Whatever has the same base. Don't worry about this other stuff over here. Just what has that same base, we're going to work with those. So keep the base the same, which is, means it's going to stay that too. And then subtract those powers. Excuse me, ex subtract those exponents to get 4. And then just bring whatever is still up there down with it. So when we look at that, we're going to have our answer of 5.59 times 2 to the 4th people per square kilometer. So you can put that on in, or if you'd like to know what that is, so that means something more to you guys, when you put that into your calculator right here, that'll give you the number 89 and 44 hundredths people per square kilometer. So whichever one you want, I'll take either of them, but make sure that your answer has that label with it. Otherwise, vocab, again, we're working with making our answers powers. Today we looked at the base and the exponents by subtracting them because that is what we do with our quotient of powers. And again, we've done product and brought that in as well today. Thus, Today, we're just talking about that you can divide powers with the same base, and then you can ex simplify expressions involving quotients, yes, but perhaps also products as well.